Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and my non-platonic roommate's birthday is fast approaching, so I've been trying to think of something special to make her. Then I remembered that she grew up watching the Powerpuff Girls, and I was hit with a burst of inspiration. She's gonna love it. Now the first step in any PPG project is making an oversized pale flesh-toned ball that will be a head. I'll roll this into a ball-shaped ball then set it aside since the second step is going to be making some absolutely massive eyeballs. Well, maybe eyeballs is incorrect since these aren't balls at all but more like little white Cadbury buttons that will be staring into your soul in just a few minutes. Once they've been baked I can pop them off the tray and fit a couple into my pre-balled flesh ball. I can then thicken up the bottom a bit to build out the chin before adding a bunch of chunky clay sausages around the eyeballs to build up some extra thick wrinkles. I'll then scrape them off the eyeball to create a pale flesh toned salad finger face before adding some little wormy dealies to the inside of the eyes to create the eyelids. A little pokey pokey with a soft silicone shaper will add some more wrinkles around the Cadbury eyeballs before using the spoon part of my sculpting tool to make a little mouth. I'll then add a little blob of clay to make the upper lip before poking a couple breathing holes just above the mouth. Now the Powerpuff Girls don't have noses, but they can definitely smell, so I imagine this is probably what you'd see if you got a close up in 4K. Also they can hear, so I'm going to poke a couple hearing holes as well. Finally back to the mouth, I'll fit a tongue inside surrounded by some little pearly white teeth and that's my first of three heads done. All I need to do then is repeat this process twice more to give me my three super heroin heads. Before I make the bodies though, I need to add some necks to the bottom sides which I'll do by smooshing a little lump of clay onto the underside and blending it in. Then with my three heads necked up, I can start making some legs. I'll start with a little lump of white clay into which I can cut myself a pair of little lumpy legs out of the bottom half. Some pinching and pulling will get me the correct dimensions and I can squish this into my unbaked neck before blending it all together and bending the leg into an appropriately heroic pose. I'll then do the same thing for the other Powerpuff Girls, smooshing lumpy legs onto their neck nubs and bending the legs into appropriately actiony power poses. Now with my bodies baked to lock the pose in place, I can start to add their character specific dresses. Specifically blue for bubbles, pink for blossom and green for buttercup. As far as adding the dresses, it's a pretty straightforward process. Squish the clay onto the body and smoosh it around a bunch until it covers the necessary parts, then add a thinner strip along the bottom so it's less a bodysuit and more a flowy summer dress. Then using the handle of a tool, I'll press a belt sized indent into the middle of the dress so I can fit a belt sized belt into the belt sized belt indent. Then some more poking and prodding with a variety of sculpting tools to add the wrinkles and folds to the dress and I'll do the same thing to the other colors. Finally before I make my arms I need some armholes so I'll poke a mid sized ball stylus into the body where those arms will be. Now the Powerpuff Girls don't really have arms in a conventional sense since they're sort of lacking hands but there's a number of theories floating around on the internet about what their arms actually are. For my money's worth though, I'd bet that rather than having a couple arms with hands on the ends, they probably just got a couple great big fingers. So naturally I made a bunch of arm sized fingers to fit into place. However, once I'd gotten them onto the model, I realized they were perhaps a bit too flimsy, so I ended up pulling them off, cutting them open and adding a little aluminium bone inside. This worked out well enough though since I was able to add a bit more detail to the finger that I think would have otherwise been a real ball ache to do sans aluminium bones. More specifically, the girls do a lot of fighting so I imagine their finger arms are going to be pretty gnarly and knobbly and borderline arthritic, so I made sure to add lots of lumps and bumps before pressing them back onto the body into some pre-drilled shoulder holes. Of course, each of the girls gets her own set of finger arms appropriately positioned to match her pose. Otherwise, the only thing left to do now is add some hair. Bubbles gets a big patch of yellow clay smooshed onto her shiny hairless dome, then I'll press and smoosh it into the correct position before adding little bits and bobs here and there to bulk it out to the correct places, followed by some final texturing to add the texture. I wrapped a couple balls of aluminium foil in yellow clay that I can jam onto each side to create her pigtails which then get textured in the same texturizing procedure before a couple blue ribbons get wrapped around the base. Blossom's hair is decidedly more orange so I'll get a long flat orange sheet of clay that I can press some longer textures into before squishing it onto her head since adding the texture after it's in place would have been kind of tricky. Otherwise she gets her four square fringe pieces in the front and I'll add the finishing textures along the length before adding her bow on top. 
With that done, I can move on to Buttercup who gets those spiky reverse wing things out the sides behind her ears and then I'll split her bangs in the front but otherwise it's a pretty straightforward hair job for her. Last but not least, I'll add the little black bobs on the bottoms of their feet. In hindsight, I kinda wish I'd given them jorts or something else so I could make their feet like I made their hands except like a single big toe, but this is a gift and I didn't want to make it look weird or unsettling. With the shoes done though, that's everything in place so all I need to do is add a little color. I'll start by adding some darker washes to the wrinkles around the eyes and mouth then feathering it out a bit with a soft dry brush to create some slight variation in the skin tones. I'm going to add the final wash to the recesses to help them stand out a tiny bit more then I'll carry that same look over to the arms as well. Now I was going to add some light blue veins to make the skin seem a little bit more alive but they kind of ended up looking like testicles and wigs so I scrapped that idea and went with a more muted palette. Each head of hair gets a color appropriate wash to add some recess shading followed by a color appropriate dry brushing to help bring the textures out. Then I'll give each of the dresses a similar style of washing with similar colors followed by some light highlights wherever the wash was a bit too dark. Blossom's bow can get a couple coats of red to bring out the detail and I'll paint the pants with a grimy grey wash followed by a watery white top coat to help bring back a bit of the whiteness. I wanted the eyes to be a little bloodshot so I started by giving the blank lifeless eyeballs an initial heavy red wash before repainting them white with several coats of very thin whites. In order to keep the paint nice and glossy and to prevent brush strokes, the more watery coats you can do the better. I managed to get about two on before I got impatient but a couple more would have been ideal. Now with my eyeballs looking extra white I can start to sketch out the iris location. I initially thought it would be kind of funny if they had enormous eyeballs with itty bitty teeny weeny pupils but again I wanted to keep these as accurate as possible so I decided to go with the ridiculously oversized iris in the middle of a ridiculously oversized eyeball. I did however keep the kind of cross-eyed look. Otherwise with my irises sorted out I can start to add the pupils which are just big black blobs in the middle of the eyeball. Finally the final finishing touch will be making my eyeballs extra gooey by adding a thick coat of UV resin over the top. With that though our trio of terrifying heroines is finished so I just need to make them fly. Fortunately I have an idea. The vast majority of Powerpuff Girl artwork includes the magical movement lines each of the girls leave behind as they fly around and I think I can just make some Walmart knockoff versions to mount my PPGs on by snapping the sheet of Perspex to the correct size. Then I can tape off the middle of my freshly snapped Perspex strips so I can airbrush a thin layer of white onto the edges. I'll then peel the tape off the center of the strip and tape over my freshly painted lines so that I can paint each panel a separate color. I'm going to use the airbrush here since I want to retain the transparency of the acrylic as much as possible. Finally, each of the magical liney dealies has some sort of character specific pattern which I've tried to recreate as a stencil with blue painter's tape. Now none of these stencils look particularly good or clean but I feel like the wonkiness only adds to the overall aesthetic that I've cultivated throughout this project. With the patterns painted onto the perspex I can peel the painter's tape off then drill a single mounting hole into the top of each of the pieces. Now I also added a small strip of perspex to the bottom of the magic pillar so that it can stand on its own. And I can reposition my powerpuff girl on her base so I can mark out where to drill the mounting hole. This hole then gets filled with a little length of acrylic rod which fits neatly into that pre-drilled pillar hole. A little CA glue will hold it in place and as long as you're looking at it straight on the top of the pillar lines up nicely with those finger arms. I'll then do the same thing for the other two Powerpuff Girls and that's us done here and on to the glamour shots.
As always, a big old thank you to the absolute gems over on Patreon who helped keep this channel churning out whatever the hell this is, and a special hey how are you to the newest of them, Madeline Green, Basil Herbington, Yeva Ant, Penny Duffield, Mythos the Bear, Ben and Charlie are hamsters, Snoring Snail, Banana Llama, Audrey Eckleberry, Kinnison Void, Sunny and Skelly, Tweet Thins, Professor Jordan, Colt Whitmore, Annalise Ho, Overshock, Lin Wu, and Spiezumjitz. You are the gift that my non-platonic roommate puts way in the back of her closet where no one can see it because she wants to keep it safe. Don't forget to like that smash button and actually if I say subscribe, does the little subscribe button below this video light up? Neat. Otherwise we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers.